of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. It is good to welcome you to worship with us on this, the first Sunday after Trinity. You are welcome to worship in the parish of Luton, St Anne with St Christopher, and I am the vicar there. Whether it is your first time of worshipping with us, whether that is virtually, or whether you are a regular member of the congregation who gather in this parish, all are welcome, all are included. O Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Saviour. And so as we gather to worship, we say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And however long it is since you last gathered to make your confession to God, we gather each Sunday, each time we come to worship, to make to God our petitions are asking of his forgiveness. And as we ce celebrate the mystery of God's love revealed in word and sacrament, so let us call to mind our sins. We will use the Kyrie form of confession. So please repeat with me the last line that I say. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus Christ, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us sacramentally with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we say together the Gloria in Excelsis, that wonderful hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our collect for this Sunday. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom, that we may find true life 
in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you have been standing, please do be seated for our first reading. A reading taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verses 2 to 8a. They had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine. But you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We hear now the words of Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. We come now to our gospel reading. If you're able, please do stand. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, 
Simon the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, Cast out demons, you received without a payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, no two tunics or sandals or a staff, for labourers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who, is, who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, Flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. Today, as I said, is the first Sunday after Trinity Sunday. It is the beginning of the long season of Trinity. It is the season of learning. Learning for Christians about our relationship with God. And it is often referred to as ordinary time, the time when we hear about and learn about the Son of God. It is an important season for those who are yet to know Christ, to come to hear of his stories, his life and the impact he made on his people. It is the beginning of the season where we can discover or rediscover all that faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is founded on. God has called us, and through this time we learn. We learn to grow into the people who have a real sense 
that God counts us as being worthy, as being known as his children, that we know ourselves to be loved beyond measure. So let's begin by learning from the Exodus reading. The people, the congregation have gathered at the base of Mount Sinai and have discovered themselves to be blessed. Together that congregation has traveled from Rephidim, a place which in the Exodus story represents a place of human need and a place of God's abundance. It was the place where the people questioned both Moses and God. They wondered if God had a plan and if they could trust the leadership of Moses. They made that expedition to Mount Sinai. They were a troubled and discontent people. They longed for the security, even though it was far from perfect, that that they had in Egypt. On arrival at Mount Sinai, Moses, their leader, went up the mountain when he heard where he heard God's promise to the people of Israel, the congregation who were camped in the wilderness. With hearing God's word, there comes responsibility. Moses heard God's word and acted. We have heard God's word this morning. It has been read from our Holy Bible. We have a responsibility to act on what we hear. Moses acted as he, prom as he shared the promise and the actions that were to be taken with the other leaders of the Jewish people on his return to the wilderness. Today we've heard the good news that the gathered congregation declared that they would live their lives according to the word of God. And I wonder how you as a dispersed congregation feel at this time. Does this story from Exodus have resonances for you? How is your journey to God, your expedition, have you declared that you too will live your lives according to the words of God? I don't know about you, but I don't see this declaration that those Israelites made as being done quietly with trepidation, worried about whether God had a plan or if Moses was good enough to be their leader. I see this as a rejoicing in God's faithfulness a trusting in the leadership of Moses. I imagine they had hearts on fire with huge joy in their hearts. Their proclamation was a real celebration, one that was shouted from the rooftops. And we see this celebration in the words of Psalm 100, where all the earth is invited to make joy, a joyful noise to proclaim because God is faithful. The psalm points us to the faithful worship of people throughout the generations. For us to sing out with joy might today feel like a big ask. But it was a big ask too for that congregation who sat in the wilderness at the base of Mount Sinai. But that is what they did. We are invited to worship our Trinitarian God in spite of COVID-19, in spite of political unrest with the, that we are experiencing, in spite of the prevalence of racism, in spite of homelessness and poverty, and so much more. To sing out, to sing aloud, has been missing from our worship until Ascension Tide. And now, thanks to the generosity of St. Martin in the Fields musicians and with the correct licensing, we now have music for us in our journey to and with Jesus. We are invited to sit at the feet of Jesus, to listen and learn. And today we have a long passage of several apparently 
four separate stories. Firstly, the harvest is great. The laborers are few. Then the twelve apostles are named as they are given authority over unclean spirits, closely followed by the mission of the twelve before encountering the coming persecutions. I have grounded today's sermon in the words of the Old Testament because it is important to remember that God promised the promises God made with Abraham and the congregation, that he would always be present and that we are to obey his voice and to keep his covenant. Jesus begins by acknowledging that there are not many who are keeping that contract with his father. The harvest is great. There are many who are spiritually hungry. And Jesus had compassion compare, com and care for those who were searching. There were but a few people who were willing to do the work that was asked of them. Not a lot has changed, has it? Even of those who say they are Christians, few engage themselves in the feeding of the spiritually hungry. But what we see is that Jesus equips those who turn up to work for his kingdom. Jesus' disciples were given power over unclean spirits. He gave them the ability to heal every kind of disease and sickness. It's not that the workers in the kingdom, Christ's vineyard, are wonderful people. It's not that they already have the ability to bring in the harvest. By turning up to work, by showing God their willingness to accept what he is asking of them, God has equipped them for the task. And this isn't something that God did just then, that Jesus enabled as he performed his miraculous miracles. No, God, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, continues this work of transformation today. Many of you have known Diane, our reader in training, since before she said her yes to God. You will have seen a change in her. I have seen Diane change and grow in the time I have known her. That is what God does. He equips and enables when you say your yes to God. When you have said your yes to God, he continues to train and support you. We saw this as Jesus sent out his 12 disciples to put into practice what they'd been trained to do. They were learning on the job. Jesus had trained the disciples and then they were sent out to put their training into practice. He sent them out with very clear instructions, words intended to help them to be effective in all they did and experienced. They were going out as workers into the harvest. They were being given the task of proclaiming the kingdom, helping those who were spiritually hungry to encounter the living God. And they went totally reliant on God. No sandals, no bag. This shows that God was their only resource. They seek the spiritually hungry. Give those people their attention. Share with those people all they have seen and heard. Share their testimony. For us too, today, the same is true. There are people who are seeking, who are looking for something they can't quite put their finger on. Those are the people that Christians are to share their experiences of God with. It is those personal encounters with God that people
people want to hear. They want to know why and how coming to church, worshipping God is something you do and how it makes a difference to your life. That's what the searchers want. The searchers want to hear your story. And then at the end of today's passage comes the warning. Becoming a worker for God will be costly. It will cause problems for you. You will be challenged. But in all of it that you will be challenged, you will not be alone. God will be with you. Which brings us back to the Israelites making their yes to God at the base of Mount Sinai. They had journeyed through the wilderness. They had endured temptations. They had yearned for what they had left behind. And then they made their contract with God. They joyously praised and worshipped God through the hardships they came to know and recognise God. We too, through hardships, may deepen our relationship with God. Jesus tells us the labourers are few, but the harvest is plenty. Let us search out the seekers, the lost, the spiritually hungry. Let us share our stories with them. The difference having a relationship with God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, our Trinitarian God, makes to us in our lives. Speak from the heart, from the very soul of your being and begin by sharing it with others in the church. Practice saying the words, sharing your story so that you may with confidence help bring in the harvest. Amen. And as we prepare to profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, I invite you now to ponder your place in bringing in the harvest. So we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For ours and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and from the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we come now to our time of intercession. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Our bidding will be, Lord, hear us. Our response, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so let us pray for the church entrusted to the disciples and the world in which they were sent. As Jesus called the twelve to be disciples, make all members of the church faithful followers in the way that he taught. We pray for all members of this parish that they will be faithful witnesses, that they will go out and help to bring in the harvest, that they will share their stories, how knowing you, Lord, improves their life. Strengthen the hope and love that belong to the Christian people. So we pray for faithful people throughout your world, for those who can worship openly and for those who are persecuted for their faith, those for whom it is dangerous to, to show to the world that faith. But help them, Lord, in quiet ways, still to be harvesters of your people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. By the Holy Spirit, bring the radiance of your love into the hearts of all who do not know you. So we pray for your world, Lord. We pray for people everywhere who are yet to encounter your love for them. And we pray today in our USPG cycle of prayer for the refugees in Iraq. The Reverend Bonnie Evans Hills, a personal friend of mine, writes in this week's prayer and invites us to look at the work of the United Nations High Commissioner for Re Refugees and for the local organisations in Iraq who have been looking after refugees for such a long time now. There is one particular refugee, Amal, who is now in a place of safety, attending school and has been well looked after. But it will be a long time before she is mentally able to recover. And her story is multiplied many, many times. And as we approach World Refugee Day this coming Saturday, let us pray for all refugees, for the work that we as Christians do, to help them to know the love of God through our actions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Open our eyes to recognise the needs of others who come close to us. So we pray for families and friends, for work colleagues, for acquaintances. And as and when we encounter them, fill us with the desire to speak the good news of the kingdom, to 
to share our stories. And we pray for the people of the province of Myanmar in Burma. For the Most Reverend Stephen Than Minich U, the Archbishop of Myanmar and the Bishop of Yangon. We pray for the work in that place, the work of sharing the good news, of sharing the kingdom, of being laborers who help to bring in the kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Relieve and comfort those who suffer from any kind of sickness. And so we pray for Diana and Diane, Michael, Karen, Tony and Maureen. For Alison, Leslie, Moira, Madge and Patricia. For Diana, Josie, Jane, David and Annette. For Jackie. Dallas, Elsie, John, and Daniel. Empower those who care for them, for all medical professionals, for all care workers, for all family and friends. Give new hope to those who have lost it through distress of body or mind. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As the living receive your divine compassion in their suffering, grant to those who have died and gather them into your kingdom. And today we remember, three years on, all who died in the Grenville Tower fire. We pray for Carol Parker, Edith Willis, Euthan Walsh, Sheila Ives, Michael Clark, Christopher Hall, and Beth Fleming, who have all died at this time. May light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. And Lord, we pray too for all who mourn the passing of a loved one. May they know your love and comfort. May one of your workers engage with them and show them your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. called to labour for the Lord. We pray that all we do and say may truly be in his name. And so we take a moment of silence to bring our own thanks and concerns to our Father. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And before we move on to the peace, let us pray our prayer for mission, that we truly will be workers in the vineyard. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love and gifts you have poured upon us. Be among us today as we seek to serve you. Give us confidence and encouragement in all we do to share your love. May we walk always in the steps of Jesus. Help us to provide a warm welcome to all who long to know you. We pray.
pray that we may respond with a desire to share more of the love of Christ. Amen. If you are able, please do stand as we come to share in God's peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And as I lay the altar, I will play a hymn. Today we're going to listen to Will You Come and Follow Me? As that is played, please do make your own offering to God, your financial contribution to the work of this church. Heavenly Father, we offer you these gifts of our, your creation and the service of our lives to the praise and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross and put an end to, die, to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Anne, Saint Christopher, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O mighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And so together we continue to pray. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And as I receive the blessed body and blood of Christ on your behalf, as a sign of our unity, as a sign that we are sent out as labourers to bring in the harvest, I invite you to make your spiritual communion. Holy Father, keep in your name those you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one, says the Lord. post-communion hymn as I undertake the ablutions is for the fruits of his creation.
Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for spiritually feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so we come to our notices. A reminder that there will be virtual refreshments at 12.30 today and again on Wednesday after Holy Eucharist on, uh, that will be at 11.45. Uh, there will also be the house group on Thursday, so we will discuss the readings from today and today's sermon. A couple of other things just to highlight for you. On Tuesday the 7th of July on, at 7.30 in the evening, we're going to have a Zoom meeting. We're going to be thinking about what it is to be an inclusive church through the lens of ethnicity. And so a number of people from across the parish will speak of their experience in the world and in the church of being a BAME person. And I do hope that there will be many from across the congregation who will come to hear of those experiences, to learn, to become more attuned also, there is the possibility that churches may be open from yesterday. This parish has not decided yet what it will do. We're finding out who is able to volunteer and when, and the PCC will make a decision about this at the end of the month. So until the end of the month, I can't tell you what decision this parish is making. And so as we prepare to leave, I remind you of that call on your life to share your story with family and friends, with work colleagues, with acquaintances, to be people who help to bring in the Lord's harvest. And so I invite you now to bow your heads to receive God's blessing. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>